Okay, so I'm here this afternoon to tell you my version of a story about how we were able to use data uh, and some really innovative work with some communities to be able to reduce uh, smoking rates um, in uh, Northern Kentucky. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. And I say that it, it's to using data to build health because I'm gonna tell you about our um, Build Health Challenge grant project that we implemented. Build Health Challenge, you can see what the word build stands for. There are a number of uh, national uh, funding partners. Interact for Health is one of them here at the local level. And um, this has been a, a terrific project. As you probably know, in public health, we spend oodles of time and energy collecting data, analyzing data, analyzing other people's data, and using data every week way to help us do the work that we do, which is to try to move the needle on a number of health issues. But every five years, we do a massive um, analysis of health data along with our community partners to come up with what our priorities are going to be for the next five years. And then we work together to identify what those strategies are in our community health improvement plan to address those priority areas. And as you might imagine, one of the priorities has to do with, oops, and this slide didn't um, act correctly. One of the uh, priorities has to do with tobacco use, which includes e-cigarettes in Northern Kentucky. Uh, behind this map, you would have seen a graph that shows that while the rates of smoking among adults in the United States and even in Kentucky have been on the decline, the story in Northern Kentucky is a very mixed story. And in 2017, our adult smoking rates actually went up, uh, which just defied all logic. But the thing about it is smoking rates, just like so many other um, health behaviors and other indicators, are not universally distributed across our health district, which includes Boone, Kenton, Campbell, and Grant counties. So when our staff um, mapped out uh, five years of the Kentucky Behavior Risk Factor Surveillance Survey data, what we got was this map that showed us that we have a range anywhere from 9% in some parts of our health district to 38% uh, smoking rates in our health district. Using data this way helps us hone in from those big, what are the smoking rates, to where are people smoking, um, to help us start really focusing in on where do we need to put more energy and resources. So there's that. And the area that was circled there is, you could see, is in the riverfront across from Cincinnati in uh, one of our communities called Covington. And I'll talk more about that in a second. In public health, we also look at a lot of death data and not only what people are dying from, but what they're dying prematurely from and what are the factors that are contributing to that. And when we looked at tobacco use in Northern Kentucky, we realized that it was, tobacco use was contributing to a quarter of our deaths, uh, many of which were premature deaths here in Northern Kentucky. When we added it up, you can see uh, that it translates into four passenger planes crashing at sea DVG every year, which should outrage everybody because if that was real, if four planes were crashing every year at CVG, people would demand something be done about that. So we were able to, with our community partners that I'll mention in a moment, get this build grant to be able to reduce the tobacco use um, by using innovative data strategies as well as creative engagement strategies, strategies with the community. Our partners uh, with us in this effort were the Northern Kentucky Regional Alliance, the Center for Great Neighborhoods, uh, which is a, um, a community development organization, nonprofit in Covington, St. Elizabeth Healthcare. And our focus was Covington because of the high rates of smoking, but Covington is a pretty big area. And so we wanted to be able to hone in even further on that. 
So our efforts really were about using local data to determine our priorities and to measure change um, because we wanted to use that to decrease our smoking rates um, through healthcare system data and marrying healthcare system data with public health data and adding in qualitative data from the community and community members. So we were really trying to mix it up here uh, to be innovative in uh, producing results. In order to do this, we wanted to, we wanted to do this in order to decrease smoking rates. And one of the things that, that we learned was we needed to increase access to smoking cessation in uh, this community. And so you will see in a little bit here uh, how working with the community to find out what would work, how should we structure this solution. Um, one of the things that we came up with was being able to promote um, providing free nicotine replacement therapy at neighborhood pharmacies to quit smoking. So one of the first steps was um, putting together a data sharing agreement with our healthcare system, St. Elizabeth Healthcare. And these are some of the pieces and parts that go along with that. Uh, this is the first time either of us had done this uh, type of um, data sharing. And so it was a, a process to learn how to do this so that everyone felt comfortable that the data was going to be secured, it was going to be safe, it was going to be protected, it was going to be kept confidential. And so there was a lot of discussion and, and we had to reach consensus on, you know, what, how are we going to manage this? It's not just having a legal document. It's how are we going to manage this in a way um, that makes everyone feel comfortable and that we're protecting people's information. So one of the first things we had to do, of course, was to decide exactly what data did we want pulled from the electronic health records of the hospitals and, um, and the healthcare providers. Well, we wanted, we figured out we needed to identify patients who smoked uh, and who had tobacco-related diseases. And so we had to figure out what ICD-10 codes those would be. But we also wanted to make sure we didn't know, need to know who these people were or their names. We didn't know, need to know specifically where they lived, but we wanted to be able to geomask it in a way that we could use that data to really um, identify um, hotspots, which I'll show you in just a second. One of the things that we did when the data was, was pulled was to look at um, what was going on with the folks who smoked and what kinds of things they were being diagnosed with. And you can see in this, this chart, uh, one of the things we saw right away was that people who smoke um, have alarmingly much higher rates of various um, conditions and, and illnesses and diseases than people who don't smoke. And that's what you see in this, um, in this particular chart. But we also use this data, as I said, to, to hotspot. Um, so in the city of Covington, to be able to really hone in on where are the neighborhoods that have the highest of the highest rates of smoking, because we knew we wanted to work in those neighborhoods with the people who live in those neighborhoods. So let me go back and see why that's not coming up. So our intervention strategies, as I said, focused on uh, uh, getting vouchers out for free nicotine replacement therapy uh, so that people who lived in those neighborhoods could take those to neighborhood pharmacies to be able to turn those in and attempt to quit smoking. So we needed to add in some new partners into the mix, and those were the neighborhood pharmacies, which turned out to be great partners because they know the people in the neighborhoods, they also um, care about the people in the neighborhoods and wanted to be part of this effort, and so they became tremendous partners. In addition to the data from St. Elizabeth, we also did focus groups and key informant interviews 
in those neighborhoods with those residents to ask them, well, how do we promote this? How are we gonna motivate people to want to um, attempt to quit smoking? And so out of those, those um, sessions, um, many grants were offered to community members so that they could come up with their own um, strategies to help promote the free nicotine replacement therapy in their neighborhoods. Um, and also to, to be creative about how you can support your neighbors in uh, quitting smoking. They also helped in developing that targeted marketing, um, what the, the postcards should look like, the direct mailing in their neighborhoods, where should posters and flyers be strategic placed. Uh, these are some of the mini grant ideas that folks came up with that were used as part of the effort. And this is the, uh, the vouchers, the posters, the postcards and, and such that were used as part of the multimedia campaign, all designed with the community members. So our results, uh, we expected about 200 people to uh, turn in vouchers and attempt to quit, about 2% of the Covington smokers. And in actuality, we had over 1,000 vouchers turned in to uh, neighborhood pharmacies, uh, which is tremendous, 8% of the smokers. And we used the data, people put their addresses on the vouchers and, we were, and gave us permission to use that data to be able to map out where those vouchers came from. And you can see it overlays right where the target neighborhoods were. We also used the voucher data to help us understand how many vouchers were being redeemed and to which pharmacy. Uh, which is a pretty cool thing to do. So over a thousand quint attempts, our first data sharing agreement with a healthcare system, laying the foundation for future work together on other priority public health issues. We learned about how pharmacies can be a terrific public health partner. And uh, we reaffirmed the fact that community engagement is absolutely key in being able to have successful uh, initiatives and produce results. Moving forward, um, we're going to be working with pharmacies to try to get them to participate in um, the 2017 law that allows pharmacists to bill for smoking cessation services so we can expand that. And as part of our tobacco program, to continue working on uh, policy makers to pass comprehensive smoke-free laws and to address the youth issue with e-cigarettes. And I think that's it. <laughs>